Hello friends, this video on tissues part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will start with epithelial tissue. Now let us talk about epithelial tissues. So what are epithelial tissues? So these are the protective tissues. That means they actually protect all other things and they are like an outer covering, outer protective covering. So these are protective tissues. They are covering of external surfaces, organs and cavities in body. Can you think of the most co common covering of the body which protects everything which are present inside our body? The skin, right? So the best and the most common example which you can think of an epithelial tissue is the skin. So if you look at the skin, it covers, it acts as a covering of all the surfaces of all the organs inside the body. It also acts as a protection for everything which is present inside the body. So what do you think our body is composed of? Our body is composed of so many delicate organs, right? So those delicate organs need some protection from the external environment. So the skin acts like that covering. It acts as a boundary keeping different body systems separate. So that means the epithelial tissue will actually, it is not that the skin is on the only epithelial tissue. There are epithelial tissues which are present in some other parts of the body as well. So they actually act as a boundary keeping different body systems separate. For example, if we take the example of skin, so skin acts as a boundary between the external environment and the internal body right similarly if we take the example of epithelial tissue which covers some of our internal organ so that acts as a boundary between that organ and anything that is outside that organ so it actually acts as a boundary and therefore it keeps different body systems separate for example if we have a boundary between the uh, what do you say between the lungs and the heart so that boundary will separate the two or, uh, organs so it will keep the two organs distinct so that is how epithelial tissue also act as boundary keeping different body systems separate so these are closely packed cells forming a continuous sheet so closely packed cells that means there are very less intercellular space now since the intercellular space is less therefore the intercellular material is also less now the question is why do we need epithelial tissues what will happen if we do not have epithelial tissue let us suppose if we do not have this strong boundaries i mean why the epithelial tissues are closely packed cells because they act as boundaries now when you build a house normally you build a boundary right now we make sure that the boundary of the house is strong enough why because the boundary is the one which is actually protecting the house correct so similarly epithelial tissue acts as a boundary so we need to ensure that the boundary is strong enough and that is why the epithelial tissues are closely packed cells that is they do not have intercellular spaces now what would have happened if they had intercellular spaces now let us suppose if there are some intercellular spaces so if there are some intercellular spaces, there is a good amount of possibility that the boundary would be leaky. That means the boundary which is made up of epithelial tissues which have leaks here and there. Now what will happen if you have leaks here and there? Let us take, let us visualize it in this way. Let us take the example of skin. Now the skin completely covers our body, right? Now let us suppose if you would have had leaks in between, in the skin and what will happen the fluids the blood and all the things which are moving inside our body they can they might come out of those leaks anytime right and that would be so yucky right that means the fluids or the waste materials or the bloods or the limbs whichever is flowing inside your body suddenly from somewhere they might come out oozy so that is why it is very important that the epithelial tissues act as good boundaries and in order to be a good boundary they should be closely packed cells with very less intercellular space so that there is very less intercellular material right so this 
So this is a brief description of the epithelial tissue which act as the covering tissue which also acts as protective tissue, acts as boundaries keeping different body systems separate and they are also closely packed cells forming a continuous sheet. No blood vessels within these tissues. Now what would have happened if there were blood vessels inside these tissues? That means Again, let us take the example of skin because skin is something which is visible to us and which you can visualize in a better way. Let us suppose if you would have had blood vessels inside skin, in, in, not inside skin, within the skin. So the skin is an epithelial tissue and within the epithelial tissue, if you would have blood vessels, in that case, what would happen? Let us suppose if somebody thumps your skin or somebody pushes your skin hard then blood will start coming out, right? You will start bleeding. If your hand uh, gets, uh, I mean, if your hand hits a, um, a hard object, right now what happens? You feel hurt. But even with minor uh, exposure of skin to some or the other hurt, it doesn't start bleeding at once. Bleeding will start only when it hurts inside the skin, right? So if somebody presses your hand, it doesn't start bleeding, right? So if you have blood vessels within these tissues, in that case, what will happen? Even when your hand or when your skin uh, gets hit by anything, it will start bleeding. It will start bleeding on and off for no reason. So we do not want that we lose so much of blood unnecessarily, right? So that is why the epithelial tissues are not, does do not have any blood vessels within them, right? Okay, so now let us look at the structure of the epithelial tissues. How do these epithelial tissues actually look like? Now these tissues have no intercellular space or very less intercellular space. I already described why is it so because they act as boundaries and we want the boundaries not to be leaky. We want the boundaries strong and stout. Now, when you look at the structure, you can uh, imagine the structure of an epithelial tissue somewhat like this. So, it has two surfaces. One surface is free. The other surface is the basal surface, which is attached to the basement membrane. So, this is the epithelial tissue. These are the cells of the epithelial tissues. And the spaces between the cells, that is intercellular space. You can see this space, again this space. So these are the intercellular spaces. So these cells are forming the epithelial tissue. Now the epithelial tissue has two surfaces. One is the free surface. So this is the free surface. The other surface which is attached to the basement membrane. So this surface of the epithelial tissue is attached to the basement membrane. So this is known as the basal surface. Right? What is this connective tissue? Connective tissue means it is showing that the epithelial tissue is the covering tissue or it is the outermost layer of tissue. Now inside the epithelial tissue you will have other tissues. So here for example you have the connective tissue. So there is a membrane which separates the epithelial tissue from the underlying connective tissue. So that membrane is known as the basement membrane. So here that membrane is displayed in orange color. So the plane or the surface of the epithelial tissue which is attached to the basement membrane that surface is known as the basal surface. <clears throat> the extracellular fibrous basement membrane separates epithelium from the underlying tissue. So this basement membrane is fibrous so it is made up of fibers. So this fibrous membrane will separate the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue. So this is how in a way you can say that the connective tissue is also protected by the epithelium tissue which is present outside. Right? So this is how the structure of an epithelial tissue looks like. So now the next very important question, where do we find epithelial tissues? So we saw that epithelial tissues are covering tissues, protective tissues, so everything is fine. Now where exactly will we see these epithelial tissues? So if you look at the human body, you can find epithelial tissues at quite a number of places. For example, the lining of the mouth. So if you look at the mouth, so the inside of the mouth, the outer lining which is present, that is made up of epithelial tissue. Again, the skin which is the most common example of epithelial tissue. The lung alveoli, 
So inside what are lung alveoli? Inside the lung, you have small uh, branched structures which are known as alveoli. We, you will study about that when we talk about the detailed structure of a lung. So even inside the lung, you have these epithelial tissues lining of blood vessels so if you look at the mechanism or the functioning of the heart you will see the blood vessels which are present there right so even on the lining of the blood vessels kidney tubules so even inside kidney tubules so everywhere it is the lining if you look at it lining of mouth lining of blood vessels right because epithelial tissues acts as protective outer covering so everywhere it acts as the outer covering or the boundary of that organ Right. So these are some of the places where we actually find epithelial tissues. Not only this, there are some other places also, for example, the digestive tract, the sweat glands. There are so many glands which have epithelial tissues. So we will talk about each of them as we go ahead with the slides and as we talk about the different types of epithelial tissue. Right. So we are learning things one by one. So first we saw what is basically epithelial tissue, the basic information on epithelial tissue. Then next we saw the structure of epithelial tissue, how it is actually formed of. Next we saw where do we see epithelial tissue. So these are some of the areas where we actually find epithelial tissues. Now as we go ahead and learn more about epithelial tissues, I will also tell you why we see epithelial tissues in all these places. So there is a reason behind that also. Right. So now we will talk about the functions of epithelial tissue and the functions of epithelial tissue which act will actually tell us why epithelial tissues are found only in those specific places inside the human body. I mean why is epithelial tissue not present everywhere inside the human body and why is it present in those selective regions. So now once you understand the functions of epithelial tissues all these questions will be answered. So the first function is it protects the underlying tissues and organs which is very obvious because it, it is the outermost covering so it, it acts as a protective cover for the underlying tissues for example the connective tissue which was lying under the epithelial tissue so in a way it was protecting the connective tissue similarly the various organs which are present inside the body like heart kidney lungs liver so it is protecting everything because it is acting as an outer covering regulates exchange of materials between the body and external environment and also between different parts of the body. So now since it acts as a boundary, therefore it also controls the flow of materials through the boundary. Let us again take the example of house. Suppose you have built a house and you have built a boundary, right? Now in the boundary you will have the main gate of the house and you have asked a security guard to stand at that boundary and he is the one who should regulate the passage of persons through that boundary. Now let us suppose some guests have come to your house. So it is the responsibility of the security guard to make sure that he allows only the correct person to enter inside the boundary and he should stop the persons whom he thinks he should not allow. Right? So that means the boundary actually acts or actually regulates the exchange of materials between the body and the external environment. So in this example, which is the body? The house is the body and external environment is the <coughs> neighborhood outside the boundary, right? And so the boundary has to decide who will come from neighborhood inside the house and who will not come. So similar is the role of epithelial tissue. So the epithelial tissue also regulates the exchange of materials between the body and the external environment and also between different parts of the body. Now when I am talking about an epithelial tissue like skin then this is applicable that it regulates between body and external environment. But when I am talking about an epithelial tissue which is maybe uh, the lining of blood vessels in that case <clears throat> In that case, it actually regulates the exchange of materials between the blood vessels and the other organs which are present outside the blood vessel. So that is why it is told between different parts of the body. Right? The next function it, it absorbs food and nutrients. So this is again another important function that let us suppose again we will go back to the same example. Let us suppose that some people have come. Uh, maybe the postman has come with some letters 
which is to be delivered to that house. So now the security person who is present at the boundary, it is his duty to take those letters and keep with him. Right? So what is he doing? He is absorbing the required documents. So similarly in this case, the epithelial tissue will also absorb the food and nutrients which are beneficial for the organism or for that particular organ or for the underlying tissue. Right? So it also helps in absorption of food and nutrients. It secretes chemicals like hormones, saliva, enzymes, etc. Now inside our body, there are so many complex processes which keep happening, right? So you know that there are uh, several chemicals like saliva. Saliva is the most common one which I'm sure all of you are aware of. Inside your mouth, you always feel the presence of a fluid-like structure, right? So that fluid-like structure is known as saliva. No, that saliva, why is that saliva secreted inside the mouth? Because it also has a purpose. It, it helps us in, when we chew food, it helps to make the food softer. So that is how it helps in breaking down the food into simpler substances and thus it helps in digestion, right? So that saliva has a purpose. Similarly, there are many hormones which get secreted inside the body. And these hormones are responsible for many characteristics present in a human being. For example, in a male body, there are several specific hormones which are secreted, which give the male-like characters. Similarly, in a female body, there are many hormones which give the female-like characteristics in, in a woman, right? So there are different kinds of hormones, saliva, enzymes, enzymes which help in digestion of food. So there are different varieties of such chemicals which are secreted inside the body and which helps the various processes taking place inside the body. So the epithelial tissues also secretes many such chemicals, right? So that is again another important function of epithelial tissues. So now if you look at these functions which the epithelial tissue performs, so you can understand the significance of the epithelial tissue. So not only that it acts as a barrier and protects the underlying organs, it also helps in exchange of materials across the boundary. It also helps to absorb food and nutrients. And now you will see that because of all these functions which it performs, that is why epithelial tissue is present in so many different types of organs. Because everywhere, depending upon the function which it performs, it is present in different organs. So now things will get clearer as we go ahead with the next slide. Now when I talk of absorbing nutrients. I'll give you an example from the human body. Let us now, I gave you an example, I mean, relating it to that boundary and house and letterbox. Now I'm giving you an example from the human body. For example, the lungs, right? When we breathe in, we take in oxygen. Now, what does the lung do? The lung is, lungs absorb that oxygen. Now, that means the purpose, the main function of the lungs is absorption. So that is why the lining of the lung has epithelium. So now if the lining of the lung is made up of epithelium, epithelium will help in absorption. And that is why epithelium is present, epithelial tissue is present on the lining of the lungs, right? Similarly, if we talk about absorbing food, right? Now, if you talk of absorbing food, this epithelial lining is also present in the small intestine. Now, small intestine plays a very important role in digestion of food. Now, the epithelial lining which on the small intestine, what does it do? It absorbs the nutrients from the digestion of food. So, when the food gets digested, you need something which should be able to absorb the nutrients, absorb the good things which are present in the food, so that those things can be utilized as energy whenever the body needs it. So the epithelial tissue which is present on the lining of the small intestine will actually help in absorbing the nutrients from during digestion of food. Right? So now you understand how epithelial, why epithelial tissues are present in certain places and what role do they play. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.